Welcome again to our Mostly AI video series on the draft EU AI Act. First, a quick recap. So, we know that the AI Act will apply to AI systems. We also learned that AI systems come in all shapes and sizes. There are foundation models, there is generative AI, and there is general purpose AI. Today, let's look at how the Draft AI Act deals with categorizing AI systems. The AI Act is, or actually will be, a law. A law contains obligations with regard to specific matters. And the AI Act contains obligations with regard to AI systems. But of course, there is a huge variety of AI systems. For example, some AI systems are used to make sure that your video game experience becomes more immersive by creating NPCs that do more than just repeat the same phrase over and over again. I think we can agree that AI used to improve NPCs in video games is not really that big of a risk for society. So there is not that much of a need to place obligations on developers and users of such an AI system. But AI systems can also be used for, let's say, chatbots that are supposed to assist customers of all sorts of businesses with any queries that they might have. Although I have yet to meet one that is actually at least partially helpful and does not want to make me throw my laptop against the wall. But their capability will undoubtedly improve. And I guess it's okay for me to want to know whether I'm chatting with a human or with a machine. But apart from that, again, chatbots aren't really what you think of when you think about the risks that artificial intelligence might pose to our society. But what about AI that is taking over a significant part of flying an airplane or controlling an elevator or operating surgical equipment on me? Honestly, I want rules to apply here to make sure that my physical integrity remains intact. I would also like to be able to rely on the proper functioning of an AI system that might influence whether I am invited to a job interview or not. All of these matters entail quite significant societal risks. And have you by any chance seen the film Minority Report or read Philip K. Dick's novella of the same name? It is a story about a police unit predicting crimes before they happen and then apprehend the future offenders before they even commit the crime. And as you can imagine, things turn out uh, quite uncomfortably, as they usually do in these stories. But I would not want an AI system that is theoretically capable of analyzing personal data to predict future crimes to exist in real life at all, even if it is highly regulated. So we see that there is a risk spectrum of applications of AI systems from no or little risk to full out all over the place riskiness. And that is also the approach that the AI Act adopts. Instead of saying, for example, any general purpose AI must follow obligation X, Y, Z, it classifies applications of AI systems according to their risk factor. On the one end of this spectrum, we have minimal risk applications, such as our video game uh, NPCs. And there are no obligations for minimal risk applications under the AI Act. Then there are applications with limited risk, such as chatbots, where essentially transparency obligations will apply. But the main focus of the AI Act is on high risk systems such as AI systems used in products that are subject to specific product liability rules and other AI systems posing a significant risk to health, safety, security or to fundamental rights. And on the very other end of the spectrum are prohibited AI practices. The list of fully banned applications is still being discussed and actually highly debated, but it will likely include our minority report scenario AI. It will include social scoring applications and manipulative subliminal techniques. So this risk-based approach makes a lot of sense in my opinion, since we do not need strict rules for AI used in computer games, but we do need very strict rules for AI used in open heart surgery or biometric identification. 
In the words of the EU legislator, the risk-based approach should tailor the type and content of binding rules for AI systems to the intensity and scope of the risks that AI systems can generate. So one of the first steps when dealing with the AI Act in practice will be to find out what risk category an AI system falls under. That sounds simple, but in practice, this will likely be quite a challenge for many developers and users of AI systems. But let's not despair and instead look at this exquisite picture of a lawyer climbing a risk-based pyramid. Thanks for watching.